You can't go past it. I ain't going to the world as it spins around. Just don't let it spin. Get you down. Never mind your fears. Cause brighter days will soon be here. Take it from me. Someday we'll all be free. And it won't be long, children. Take it from me. Good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Y'all know I'm here on this mental illness thing. I'm, I want to talk about um some, I want to go some spaces. Y'all know you don't want to go. I get it. I get it. Who in the world wants to admit that there's just a lot of shit going on that we can't explain? Okay? But that's okay. Because you ain't by yourself. And um, what you want to do is you want to get underneath anything that's making you be less than yourself. But if you don't know what yourself is supposed to be, you don't know what you're getting up under or what to get up under. But I, I contend still. That every person in the hood needs some sort of therapy. We need some sort of psychiatric help because what we've normalized as okay behavior is really sick as hell. I mean, we're sick. And when you tell us this, then, of course, you're being a... Uh, a drag in society or you're being on the other side or you're being a, um, a Benedict Arnold, Uncle Tom, whatever negative derogatory uh, phrase or name that we may have when we don't want to deal with our issues. Okay. we we'll make excuses. I'm, I've made them, you making them. And, um, but until we get up under this thing, it's all, it's going to all be bad. And it can lead to some shit that um you really don't even want you don't even know how deep the shit can get. So what I wanted to talk about today is a person that's very dear to me, a person that I had the pleasure of not working with, but meeting and just sit back in the studio and watching in awe at Kurt Tom Studios. A lot of y'all know Curtis Mayfield Studio over in Chicago, um, which is right up the road. 89 miles, so 90 miles. So a lot of us musicians in Milwaukee went up to went over to Chicago, down to Chicago, I should say, to um work, get studio work. In fact, most of the studio work I do, even to this day, is on the west side of Chicago. So um, it's still a a vibrant place for musicians, and always has been. But this particular musician I want to talk about today is somebody that is so talented that um, that's no longer with us. And I think people need to really, really um, understand this guy, from my perspective, at least. Um, his name was uh, Donnie Edward Hathaway. He was born October 1st, 1945. Um, he was an American soul singer, keyboardist, a songwriter, and arranger. Hathaway has been described as a soul legend by the Rolling Stones. In my opinion, one of the best male vocalists to ever do it. His most popular song includes The Ghetto. Fuck it, fuck it, ghetto. The Ghetto. Y'all know that? What y'all know about that? Or Hang on a mistletoe, I'm gonna get to know you better. This Christmas, which my son uh, Devon sings that song, and uh, <laughs> I mean he 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 sings. It. Shout out to you, Devon. I love you. Um, uh, and then there's the one I just sang. Someday, 
take it from me. Someday we'll all be free. All of us. Oh man, he this, the hits that I know from Donnie, and I and I must admit, um, I was around when the Ghetto album was out. A lot of y'all was barely born, so <laughs> we won't even talk about that. Uh, but Donnie Hathaway. Wow. You know, he was raised by his grandmother in St. Louis. And he graduated from the same high school that my mom and my aunt graduated from. That's Vashon High School. So I have a lot of connection with uh, this young man, uh, Donnie Hathaway, who I just love from the bottom of my heart. Um, he was the son of Drusilla Huntley, and he was born in Chicago, Illinois. But he was raised by his grandmother, Martha Pitts, also known as Martha Cromwell. In the Car Square Housing Project of St. Louis, Missouri, Hathaway began singing in church with his grandmother. His grandmother was also a professional singer. At the age of three, he started studying piano. He graduated from Vishon High School in 1963, um, and then he studied fine arts on a scholarship at Howard University in Washington, D.C. And that's where he met Roberta Flack. At Howard, he also was a member of the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. And he also formed a, a trio, a jazz trio with drummer Rick Powell. Um, but during 1967, he left Howard just before uh, completing a degree and after receiving a job uh, in the music business. I mean, he had a few more months before he graduated. And I guess he was like, I'm only in school to make money anyway, to get a good job to make good money. But I'm making money first. So what am I tripping on this degree for? And I don't judge him either way. Donnie Hathaway worked as a studio uh, session musician pr and produced for Curtis Mayfield's Kurt Tom Records in Chicago. That's where I met him. He did the arrangements for hits uh, by the um, Unifits, uh, Court of Love, uh, he, he took part in projects by the staple singers Jerry Butler, Rita Franklin, and the Impressions, and even Curtis Mayfield himself. After becoming a house producer at Kurt Time, he started recording there. Donnie recorded his first single under his own name in 1969. A duet with singer June Conquest called I Thank You, Baby. And they also recorded a duet called Just Another Reason, released as the B-side. In case y'all didn't know, back in the day, we had 45s, and if you had it, you had to have an A and B side, okay? If you had a song that you slated for release, then you got to have the B side for, you know, the the album as well. You know, that's the way it used to go. It used to go, you come out with a single, you make an A and B side, right? And then after you make the B, A and B side, that is going to, what's going to follow that should be uh, an LP, a long play. Plus the beat juice. Um, so that's Donnie Hathaway. I mean, it was later that he signed uh, with Atco Records, but you know, he had a, a vast array of musicians that he worked with in Chicago, like Leon. I don't know if y'all know, remember Leroy Hudson? Um, in one way, uh, Donnie's album, Everything is Everything, was just a bomb. Um, oh, my goodness. Um, Donnie Hathaway has done a lot of serious, beautiful things here in this music business. Um, I think one of his, his final album, uh, Extension of a Man, came out in 1973. And, and, um, uh, uh yeah, I I believe, yeah. What was on that 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 uh that was so? What was on that album? I think um, for sure someday we'll all be free. But that song, that Whitney Houston song, uh, on that movie, I I love the Lord. He heard my cry. 
that song. Na, 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 na. Uh, I can't think of it right now, but that was on that album. And let me just say this. Um, Donnie, during the peak of his career, he began to suffer from, from severe, severe bouts of depression and exhibiting unusual behavior, you know, which a lot of musicians do. Y'all don't know, we go through these down periods where, you know, it's just like ain't nothing right. And, and a lot of people that are involved in show business that are real creative, that are real talented, sometimes we have a hard time of um, dealing with reality the way it is. This is just my experience of dealing with different musicians. Um, he began to exhibit, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia for which he was described various medications and they were still experimenting. Now, the mental health profession wasn't as, um, I guess it wasn't even as, you know, thorough as it is today. It's because at one point, Donnie Hathaway was prescribed 14 different medications that he was to take twice a day. And after Hathaway was diagnosed and began taking the medication, his mental state improved. However, uh, Eula said, Eula, Eula, Eulala Hathaway said that her husband became less than diligent about following his prescription regimen. And then when he began feeling better, then he just stopped taking his medicine altogether, which was absolutely disastrous for him. He needed to be on some kind of medication to balance out the way his brain worked, you know. And a lot of us who hear sounds and hear music and hear notes and stuff, we don't know how to um, diagnose or to say what these things are. But as we grow older, we realize everybody's mind doesn't work that way. Everybody doesn't hear symphonies. You know, everybody doesn't hear melodies in their minds. But when you are gifted to be a creator of music, that happens all the time. In fact, that's where you live. And then a lot of times, you know, it, it makes other parts of the brain um, suffer or, uh, you know, have glitches. That's the way I just like to call it. Uh, it's like from 73 to 77, Hathaway's mental instability wreaked havoc on his life and career and required several hospitalizations. The effects of his depression and severe mood swings also drove a wedge in his and Flack's friendship. They did not reconcile for several years and did not release additional music until after until the successful release of uh, The Closer I Get to You, and that was in 1978. Black and Hathaway then resumed studio recording to compose the second album of duets, and it was during that time when uh, he killed himself, really. Um, a lot of us know that. I just want to say that Donny Hathaway, uh, if anybody know what the, ho the Essex Hotel a uh, house, I mean, yeah, it looks like in New York. Then y'all know it's like a 15, 20 foot story building. And Hathaway was found dead on the sidewalk below of his 15 floor room in New York City Essex house. It was reported that he had jumped from his balcony. The glass had been neatly removed from the window and there were no signs of struggle, leading the investigators to rule that his, his death was a homicide. Um, Roberta Flack and was devastated as as was the, all the other musicians who had been working with him that day. In fact, um, on January 13th, he began a recording session with producers Eric Mercury and James M. Tumay. Uh Each reported that although Hathaway was singing fine, he began to act irrationally, seeming to be paranoid and delusional, according to M. Tumay. Hathaway said that white people were trying to kill him and his had a connection to his brain, had tried to connect his brain to a machine for the purpose of stealing his music and his sound. Given Hathaway's behavior, Mercury said he decided that the recording session should end. And so uh, they aborted the project and all of the musicians went home. Um, it's funny, y'all. Whenever people think they get paranoid and think something's happening, it's always 
white people doing something to us. That never changes, does it? Because it, it's 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 always in the back of our minds that y'all doing something. That's it's really sad, but it's really true. Um, but to move on from that, um, Donny Hathaway was one talented musician. Uh, he was one talented musician. His his funeral was conducted by the Reverend Jesse Jackson, and the whispers recorded a song uh, called A Song for Donnie because a lot of people were so hurt by the tragic death of Donnie Hathaway. And he left those little girls at the time, little Layla and her sister. They were little they were little girls. Um and it was just a sad time for everybody. I believe I met Donnie in about nineteen seventy five. I was a teenager, barely a teen I mean a teenager. Um, and I met him in Kurtom Studios in Chicago. Uh, and uh, he was a very gentle soul. He didn't talk much. He acknowledged there were people in the studio. And that was about it. Um, did no small talk, no nothing. But I remember he had this covenant stare to me that it seemed a little off, but once he put that, turned that key, once he turned that electric, that fender rose, and once he got the, oh, hitting those notes, I was just in awe. I was just in awe. Um, I want to give a shout out though, and I want to, you know, send my condolences again to you, la lay, <laughs> you, la, you, la, loot. Ooh la la. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm bouncing up y'all days like this. Trust me. I charge it to my head, not my heart. You la oola. You layla. You layla. Donnell. You layla Donnell. And I think that is. Layla's name, because Layla's named after her mama. And then you got Kenya. Um, Layla is a beautiful singer in her own right. Her voice is so rich. And um, to hear her is to almost hear her daddy. Her and her, her and her sister are graduate. Kenya are graduates of Berkeley College of Music. But I want to give a shout out to them. And I want them to know that your, that, um, while, uh, your father's end, was seriously tragic, and the, but the lives that he touched in a positive way, including mine, was something that I'll, I'll forever be grateful for, and it's something that um I will always treasure. Mr. Donnie Hathaway. Now he might have suffered from a mental illness that, again, most of us don't want to talk about in this life, mental illness and our mental capacity. Um, his was challenged. And um, we didn't know much much about mental health then as we do now. So I want to just say, rest in peace, my brother. Uh, you gave beautiful music to the world. And that was a gift from God. All righty. I'll see y'all in the next video.